Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be working on a projectile system. So let's jump right into it. What I'm going to do first is just describe uh, what we want to create here. So I'm going to imagine this gray dot here. So this gray dot is the projectile that we're firing. So when we fire it on the client, the client initially uh, creates it there. And what's going to happen on the back end is we want to uh, step this projectile over time as we fire it, right? So that visually what happens is it looks like this projectile is traveling along this path with some sort of arc, right? Like it's a physics object. So what happens is when we fire this on the client, we're gonna fire it with the ID of what it is and probably the time that it was created. So we're gonna take all that and we're gonna send it to the server and as well as the position. And what the server is going to do is it's going to take that exact thing, but it's going to uh, perform the same action, but this time without the visual of the snowball. So what's going to happen is it's going to instantiate it at the position, and it's going to track it over time until we reach this point here. Right? Let's say that's the target of where the projectile hits the ground. And in our case, we're going to use a snowball. So if I say snowball, that's what I mean. Um... So then what's going to happen is the server, as soon as it creates it, is going to replicate that again back over to this second client over here, client number two. But that usually takes some time. So let's say it replicates um, a couple milliseconds later at maybe this point or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this here and we're going to call this delta t. So then we're going to pass the same information of over here along with our delta t and while the server tracks this path here as well as like validating that a hit is valid and making sure that a projectile is valid um, we're going to replicate this same information back over to the other client so the client is going to instantiate the new uh, projectile here and you know it's going to go over this trajectory um, but what's going to happen is that we're actually going to start it at T plus delta T here so that this client looks exactly the same as this client. So if this client fired here at the initial time and this delta T happened here, then we should really create the projectile here. So now as the projectile moves throughout time, by the time it gets down here and hits the target, all three should be hitting the target at relatively the same time. If there's a very, very small fraction of time difference, that's acceptable, but we're not looking at something like a half a second or a full second of time delay, which is going to be really noticeable, especially for a fast projectile. So this is going to be a custom replication with the client-sided visualization. And something that you might notice is that we also do this ray casting on the client. So really the only difference between the client and the server is that the server is only performing mathematical calculations. All right, so let's hop into Studio and get started on this. Okay, so I'm here in Studio, and I've got a few things set up. I've got this snowball here with a particle effect just so we can see it moving. I've created this projectile data for the snowball, which has a velocity, which is the speed the snowball is going to move at, an acceleration, which provides a drop over time, the model, which is just the snowball model, and the lifetime, which is how long it's gonna last if it doesn't hit anything. So if we throw it up in the air, we don't want our things continually going, especially if they don't have like a drop. So we're gonna to wanna to cancel it out at some point. So that's the five second delay. Additionally, to find a type here for the projectile packet, which is what we're gonna use, uh, what we use back here in our example of this ID time and position is what we're gonna use here. So we can see that we've got the origin, uh, the position, which is the current position, not the uh, original position, which is the origin. The velocity, which is the speed over time. The acceleration, start time, uh, which is the initial time when the first client creates it. The owner and the projectile type, which uh, in this case is going to be a snowball. And that's where we're going to get some of this information is using that projectile type. So what I'm quickly going to do is I'm going to write up a client tool component here um, that will start creating snowballs. And this uses the component system that I've talked about in previous videos. Hey guys, this is me in editing. I'm a little sick right now, so if I sound congested, that's why. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for all the support and stuff. Uh, make sure to join the community. And uh, I just want to remind you that the 
place will be available in the description on copy locked if you want to go check out all the scripts okay so i've cl quickly whipped up some code here where um, when our snowball tool gets activated it's going to fire this uh, create projectile event and it's going to create a snowball snowball projectile at the handle position here and in the mouse hit direction or in this direction here so if the handle's here and the mouse is over here we're going to fire in this direction towards the mouse basically okay so the next thing i'm going to create is the client visualization and this will be nice because we can copy the client code to the server and just strip down some of the visualization parts and that'll be the server components So quickly whip together the visualization component where you can see now we have these snowball projectiles that we can fire um, and they go off and they have a little particle on them. So let's just um, tweak the speed and the acceleration here so that it looks good. Okay, cool. So I've tweaked the values so that it looks nice. So the next step we're going to need to add is uh, actually ray casting so that the projectile will destroy itself when it hits something. we should see that it is saying hit surface when we hit a surface but if we fire it up in the air yeah it should despawn over time so we can see that the snowball is in debris and if we wait about five seconds it should despawn there okay cool so the client is working. So uh, if we want to add some custom hit logic, like taking damage or playing a visual effect, that's when this hit something comes into play. So for now, we're just going to say hit surface. So what I want to do now is duplicate this over to the server. And this is where the server is going to have its own projectile. So now I'm going to work on the server. And some tweaks that we're going to make is um when a player adds a projectile we want to replicate it to other clients and we don't want to have a visual okay so i've uh created the server script here it's just a duplication of the client, um, but I removed any visual components. And additionally, I've added the owner and the initial time that the projectile was created. Uh, and those are defined by the client. As well as I have um, all the projectiles now use a GUID key instead of um, the visual. And if we used a regular index, it would uh, set the indices to nil, and then the table would shorten, and it would get um, it would get weird when you iterate over the table for every render step here. Um, so I just use this key so that it sets the dictionary key to nil, um, and there's no issues with resizing a table. So the next step I want to create is that when the client fires, we replicate to the server, and the server will perform the replication to other clients. So let's get started on that. Okay, so 
So we should see that the way I've done it is if a client fires a projectile, we will add the projectile, uh, fire the server, and then after we fire the server, we're going to add the visual so we don't uh, have that extra part that we're sending to the server, especially since the visual is client-sided. Uh, so we fire this packet to the server. The server is going to receive that packet, take in the packet, and add it to the uh, server uh, packets that the server tracks. And I realize I made an error there. And then it's going to re-replicate this back, except it's going to exclude the owner. So then it's going to go back to the client. The client's going to receive this packet. It's going to get the current time and the time difference between when the packet was created and the current time that the client is visualizing it. And if we go back here, that's this difference here, this delta time. So this point here, which I guess I'll uh, color in green, this right here is this um, this delta time here, the uh, the current time minus the packet start time. So that's the position that the projectile is at. And so we move the position uh, from the origin in the direction that it's going times the delta time. We should see now that we're only getting one snowball visual and we're having a client hit surface and a server hit surface. So that's how you create a simple projectile system and it's uh, very expandable. You saw that there's the client side hit effects, the server side hit effects. Uh, if you wanted to have a visual effect where there was some sort of function of the snowball that happened on step, maybe you could add it in here. Um, if you wanted to add more projectile types, you could add more uh, projectiles in here. You can have like a rocket or a laser or a bullet. Uh, you can tweak the velocity and acceleration and lifetime. You could add more values in here, so like functions or uh, different model variations perhaps. So there's a lot of different ways that you could expand on this, but uh, this is just the basics. Okay, so let's just take a quick example and check out a projectile system uh, that's working, and we'll see a few different examples of different projectiles. Okay, so I'm here in my game uh, Tycoon Wars that I'm making, and I have a couple different weapons. I have this paintball gun here, which has this paintball projectile. As you can see, when it lands, it creates these splats on the ground. And you'll notice that I'm creating a ton of splats here, but if I switch over to the server, and I fly over here, there isn't a single splat. That's because all those splats are client-sided. As well here, I have this rocket launcher, but this rocket launcher has a rocket there with some drop, and it has this cool um, explosion effect, and you can see it's got this trail. But if I fire this rocket on the client, we're not going to see any rocket on the server. That's because the server doesn't visualize any of that stuff. What the server does deal with, however, is these uh, physical effects here, like that force, or dealing damage to me if I shoot myself too close. So you'll notice if I shoot myself here, I lose a bunch of health. So that's a couple practical examples showing different projectiles with different speeds and some on-hit effects and things like that. If you want to see a part two where maybe I uh, expand on the system some more, show you guys how to add more variants, add more weapons, stuff like that. Um, drop your opinion down in the comments below. Okay, well, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, thank you guys. Have a good day.